Hey everyone, thanks for joining in for another session. Um, I am super excited about this topic that Jake from EcoCard is going to cover about shopping trends from eco-conscious uh, customers, something that's like near and dear to my heart. So Jake, can you um, introduce yourself and also tell us a little bit about what being what it means to be eco-conscious from a customer standpoint? Yeah, of course. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, so um, as she said, my name's Jake Chat. I'm the head of marketing at EcoCar. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, the value of eco-conscious shoppers and why you want to be speaking to them, right? Um, and so what it means to be an eco-conscious shopper is it means that you put your dollar where your values are. And one of those values tends to be um, sustainability or um, environmental health. Um, right. And so this can be done in multiple ways from um, buying things from brands who want to have less waste. So they focus on, you know, uh, recyclable packaging, for example, all the way to brands who are working on the carbon emissions associated with their operations and orders and that sort of thing. Um, so should I get started right away? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for covering that, because I know sustainability is probably a new topic that a lot of these brands are um, hearing about and probably thinking about for the first time. So thanks for covering that. And I'm, I'm super excited for your session to see the shopping trends of eco -shop, uh, conscious shoppers this Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So yeah, take it away, Jake. Cool. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so basically, um, I'll start off by kind of introducing um, who EcoCart is um, before I dive in. So um, what we are is a sustainability solution that works with e-commerce brands, um, and we help those brands calculate the carbon emissions associated with every single one of their orders at the moment of checkout. Um, and then we also connect those brands with um, a, a diverse portfolio of offsetting projects um, so that they can then actually counteract the emissions from those orders at that same moment. And this can be done either at the cost of the e-commerce brand themselves. So they're offsetting orders on behalf of the shoppers, or they can give shoppers the opportunity to offset their own order um, by giving them you know, a little checkbox um, uh, experience basically when they're checking out to add you know, typically what, and, uh, what is one to 2% of their order. Um, to, to counteract their own orders, carbon emissions. So let's dive in. So I like to start these off by kind of talking about why sustainability, right? Um, it, you know, it's not directly associated with e-commerce all the time. So why is this important, right? Um, so in today's age, sustainability is one of the most impactful ways for brands to connect with consumers. Um, and so why do I say this, right? Um, because actually two out of every three consumers say that they check if a brand is sustainable before purchasing. Now, what it means for a brand to be sustainable can mean various different things to each specific consumer. Like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, this can be from making sure they're not using plastic in their packaging to making sure they're minimizing the emissions associated with their operations or their orders um, to making sure that they're actually creating systems and infrastructure for repurchasing or recycling products at end of life type of thing, right? Um, and then this other uh, statistic that I like to kind of tell people about over here is that 64% of shoppers also say they'll actually pay more for sustainable products, right? So if you have, um, you know, suntan lotion A over here who does have plastic um, packaging versus suntan lotion B over here who uses recycled um, packaging, then they would be willing to actually pay a certain percentage more for um, the suntan lotion that does not actually use um, plastic or uses recycled plastic packaging. So then you're probably wondering, you know, okay, I understand it's really you know, about building relationships with customers and that's great and all, I really love retention, but Black Friday, Cyber Monday is really about that acquisition part um, of my business, right? I wanna bring in as many new customers and as many purchases as possible, right? And so what we kind of like to talk about at EcoCar is that, you know, retention is acquisition nowadays, right? Um, customer acquisitions, as you all know, is getting harder and harder, right? Um, and so you really need to focus on retention because that's a way to cheapen how you acquire new customers and how you acquire new, you know, purchases, so on and so forth from those repeat purchases, right? So some of these statistics over here on the right that I like to talk about is 
every year um, for the past couple of years now, we've seen acquisition costs double year over year, right? Sometimes it's even more. Um, we've also seen that repeat um, customers are actually three times more likely to recommend your brand to new customers, right? So these people who you're building relationships with will then actually acquire new customers for you. And that obviously drives your acquisition costs down as well. Um, and then of course, this um, last one is just that like when you are building those relationships and why retention is so important is that these repeat customers, these loyal customers actually spend more with you, right? They, they on average have a 130% higher AOV than non-repeat purchase customers. So let's dive into some like top level Black Friday, Cyber Monday statistics to, um, to start, right? Um, so I first wanted to kind of talk about some, some proprietary data we saw from EcoCart, right? So what you're looking at on this graph, um, on this graph on the left is um, the percentage of orders made carbon neutral. So sort of think like the percentage of total orders across a number of brands um, and of those orders, what percentage actually selected to make their orders carbon neutral. So we, I included the 24th in here so you could kind of see um, you know, a, a control group of sorts, right? Um, and so as you saw, um, as soon as Black Friday hit, we actually saw a 25 to 30% increase just overnight, basically, of the percentage of people willing to make their order carbon neutral. Of course, this died down on Saturday and then went sort of back to normal on Sunday. But then when people jumped back in, excited for these new um, deals on Monday, um, act, it actually jumped back up to a, a similar range that we saw on Black Friday, right? Um, and so something else I wanted to point out here that you can't really see in this graph is, in this graph is when we took a group um, of merchants that we saw from last year, the same time period compared to this year um, and the same time period, we actually saw four times the number of orders were made carbon neutral compared to last year at that same um, group of merchants, basically, right? So not only are people excited to be more sustainable or act more sustainably during the big holiday weekend, but year over year, the number of shoppers who are willing to be more sustainable has in increased 4x. So, you know, just like is typical across the industry, we're really seeing that this is becoming more and more popular every single year. And thus, thus it's becoming more and more important for brands to be paying attention to it, right? Um, and so of course, you know, people are not just behaving more sustainably or wanting sustainability more. These shoppers who are being more sustainable actually have more value is kind of what I wanna drive home with this next slide. So what we saw of um, the shoppers who actually chose to be sustainable versus those who did not, is that they actually had a 14% higher conversion rate um, than, than the typical shopper, which, you know, that in and of itself is miraculous, right? But then on top of that, they also had a 38% um, higher average order value than non-sustainable shoppers. So not only are people wanting brands to be more sustainable and give them more sustainable options, but they're actually, you know, putting their money where their mouth is and they're willing to buy from brands who are being more sustainable or giving those sustainable options. And they're also willing to buy more, um, you know, or pay more, spend more with those brands, basically. So then I wanted to dive into sort of specific sustainability strategies we saw and the payoff um, that came from them over the weekend. So this first one I want to talk about is just sustainability forward messaging. Um, so I included a couple examples here over on the right. So you can see um, one is turning Black Friday into Green Friday. Um, another also leverages Green Friday, but was like an on-site um, experience. And then of course, just like using sustainable messaging um, along with your um, promotions or your, your holiday messaging basically, right? And so some of the results that um, our brands actually saw from initiatives or strategies like these is um, for example, uh, one brand, when we um, leveraged sustainable messaging, so like, you know, we're making all orders 100% carbon neutral this Black Friday, next to just typical Black Friday promotional ads, um, those ads, ad those sustainable um, forward ads actually saw two times the click-through rate compared to the generic Black Friday ads, right? So again, just 
going to show that like shoppers are interested in this. Um, I think another thing to point out here is, you know, it really probably cut through the monotony that a lot of shoppers are being bombarded with over the two weeks leading up to Black Friday, right? Everyone's advertising to consumers about what their discounts are, what their, um, you know, shop new the codes for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, so on and so forth. So when you kind of have this different messaging that they're not used to, it obviously makes them stop and think and then engage, right? Um, and then uh, the, the second point I wanted to point out here is um, that sustainability first brands actually saw higher engagement when using sustainable forward messaging as well. So that's kind of this example of Twoobs over here that I wanted to point out is like, so they did not specifically have a sustainable forward um, promotion per se, but they just use sustainable messaging within all of their messaging. So, you know, they called it happy green Friday and acted like black Friday wasn't even on their mind type of thing um, because sustainability is supposed to be such an innate part of who their brand is and what their, their customers and the consumers that they want to attract should be caring about. Um, and, you know, so this year when they were using this language compared to previous years when they weren't using this language, they actually saw increases in engagement across from conversion rate to click through rate, so on and so forth. Um, and then the last part here I kind of want to talk about is not just those offsite experience of experiences of those ads I talked about at first, but also on-site experiences and leveraging sustainable messaging in those, right? So pop-ups and banners, for example. So we had multiple brands um, implement various pop-ups and banners where they did A-B tests of just generic um, promotional uh, messaging on them versus promotional messaging and sustainable messaging combined. And what they saw was um, a, on average, a three times greater click-through rate on these pop-ups or banners as well. So again, not just off-site, but on-site experiences that are including the sustainable messaging, of course, on top of promotions many times, but not always. Um, it, it, sh it goes to show you that like adding that extra layer um, and showing consumers that you still care about this, you're, this is still top of mind, really does drive the results um, that, that you want, basically. Moving on to this next one, um, so kind of talking about actual sustainable promotions, right? So I wanted to bring out this example of Supergoop, who um, had promotions around specific products, right? Which is very typical um, for merchants across Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. Um, so on the, um, the PDPs um, of the specific products where they're actually looking to drive those promotions, those sales, so on and so forth over the weekend, they included sustainable messaging on top of that, right? So this specific product has a carbon new neutral option with EcoCart, as you can see there at the bottom underneath the um, add to cart button, right? Um, and so what they saw from this was that the sustainable offerings in conjunction with the promotions actually drove engagement up anywhere from 25 to 35%. So again, not just Supergoop did this, we had multiple um, merchants do this. And so in that range was where we saw people falling, where when you included that sustainable messaging on top of just the generic promotions, it did increase engagement even more than just the promotions themselves, right? Um, and then the um, second thing I wanted to call out here is that shoppers who engage with sustainable promo promotions were actually five times more likely to take sustainable actions as well, right? So what we did here was people who landed on a page like this and then ended up in their cart on the cart page with their cart filled, they were five times more likely to actually convert and um, convert with offsetting if they were being given the option to offset their own order compared to shoppers who went on another page that did not have this PDP prompt um, and ended up in the cart page with that same option, they were five times more likely than, than those um, ones who didn't have the PDP prompt prior to going to the cart page, which is super interesting as well, right? Um, and then this third one I wanna talk about is you know um, adding rewards for sustainable actions, right? So um, Face the Future, another cosmetic company, um, basically implemented a sustainable aspect to their loyalty um, program, right? So basically what you could do here is it was a two-way deal, right? So if you took a sustainable action such as offsetting, um, you know, 
Yeah, such as like offsetting the carbon emissions of your order. Um, you know, another good example of this outside of just like the eco card example I like to talk about are like um, some apparel brands that we work with who have like repurchasing uh, programs. So if someone like decides to buy, you know, uh, used or repurchased um, items, that could also add um, loyalty points. But basically, if a consumer or a shopper is taking those sustainable actions, they actually get more loyalty points than it than what you would get just for checking out and buying whatever the standard um, loyalty points that are associated with a purchase is, right? And then on the other hand here is um, you could actually leverage loyalty points that you've already built up to make your order more sustainable, right? So this is the idea of um, offsetting the emissions associated with your order using loyalty points instead of money, for example, right? And so what we saw specifically with Face the Future were some like really amazing results around this. So we saw that um, shoppers who engaged with this option actually had a 130% higher AOV than their typical shopper, right? Um, they also were three times more, uh, or they spent three times more um, than their typical shopper as well, and were three times more likely to make a repeat purchase than typical shoppers. And now the reason we know this is because they did this a few weeks leading up into Black Friday and had, you know, a an extended sale and so on and so forth. Um, but so it really goes to show and drives home that initial point I was making of like, this really is about building relationships. And when you are, you know, meeting shoppers where their values are, um, and you're showing them that you care about the same things that they care about, they're willing to spend more, they're willing to be more loyal, they're willing to come back for more. And, you know, these shoppers just really, really are worth what they say they're worth. They're, they're worth more than a typical shopper, even a lot of the times. And that's all I have for today. So um, thanks for listening and open for questions. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Um, hopefully a lot of people will start considering eco-friendly initiatives in their brands just because like I am an eco-friendly shopper and I can say that I spend a lot more and I will spend more if the brand is showing any signs of caring about um, the ecosystem or just initiatives that I can take or is there a specific product that is going to a specific non-for-profit that um, helps our environment. So super excited for these brands just to be exposed to you guys because it is such an easy plug and play process to use EcoCart. Um, and some questions that we had from the chat. Um, I know you gave a lot of examples on um, different marketing initiatives, but someone had a specific question on, is there a way to say, hey, we are eco-friendly without sounding like a self-righteous brand? Yeah, um, so I we get like different variations of this question a lot, I think. And I think what I really like to drive home personally about this is that becoming a sustainable brand or becoming more sustainable really is a journey, right? And I think yeah. most consumers actually understand that. And so the important part is being transparent and being like, okay, this is kind of where we are. This is what we're doing today. This is, you know, why we've selected to do these things and why we can't do these other things yet. Um, but here are our end goals and maybe how we're going to work to get there. We yeah. definitely need your help to do it too, right? And that's kind of why at EcoCart specifically, we have the various experiences that we do is because when you include shoppers in your mission to be more sustainable and they actually get to participate, then it doesn't come off as like, hey, I'm just doing this to show off or greenwash. It's about like, hey, we're in this together and we really want to accomplish these things, help us type of thing. So. Awesome. Yeah, that is a great way to approach being eco-friendly. And another um, viewer had a question. It was more specific on if you have stats based on where the consumer lives. They said, what does the stats for Southern US look like? Most of our brands sell higher in the South. And from my experience, I see less informed people about eco-friendly in the South. Do you guys do stats on where customers live? Yeah. Um, so I would say we see very similar things, right? So obviously um, the Northeast and out West, you you definitely see people um, tend to be more willing to, to take sustainable actions or caring about sustainability more. Of course, like when you look at metropolitan areas in the South, you do see higher rates than rural areas. But I would say that's true, like in the North um, and, you know, out West as well, where like, 
even rural Northeast, you definitely see rates that are lower than in metropolitan Northeast and West. Um, so, you know, when you come in contact with with the consumers who are less informed or care about this less, I think it's more so just an opportunity for education. Um, and that's, again, kind of what we like to um, lean into is like, this really is about building relationships. So like, if maybe someone doesn't care about it here, um, right here and now, there are plenty of opportunities later on to while you're talking to them about coming back, buying more, so on and so forth, you can also talk to them about the impact you've made, how it's important, why it's, it should be important to them and how it's affected the world around them type of thing. So, yeah, I totally agree. I think it starts with the brand educating, even on how to dispose of packaging the proper way. Like, hey, yeah. this is our packaging. And if it is eco-friendly, how do I dispose of it the right way? Because most people don't know how to do that. And Craig, we see um, your question. Like, I agree with you guys, but how do I make my customers care? Jake, I think you covered it. But if you have anything else to say on that point. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you can never just fully make someone care. Like, if they don't, I think, again, it's really about finding that middle ground and then the education, right? So you got to meet them where they do care right now or they will understand today. And then from there, it's really just about a continued conversation and figuring out, like I said, those very specific parts of sustainability that maybe do align with things they care about today, right? Because some people really care about plastic waste, some people really care about carbon emissions. Some people really care about repeat, um, like repeat purchase or like rebuying programs. Um, so, so it really is just about getting to know them more and then meeting them where they can understand and then kind of educating them, like I said. So awesome. Thank you so much, Jake.